upside down. Now, pop that there, and we're going we're to put some armour on. So first up, we're going to put some medieval armour. We're going to put a brigandine on, which is a quilted cloth, which would have been worn over the whole body. So we're just using some, some old felt and a, a bit of quite an unattractive curtain. Um, so we're going to pop that on there. And then we shall have a metal plate on there. This armour that we do that we're looking at, this is this is we quality-wise, it's relatively low carbon, so that's a reasonable representation. Thickness-wise, mm -hmm. uh, this one's about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimetres. That's kind of the thickness that might go on your arm or on your leg. So armour is compromised between mobility and protection. You could be completely protected by a wall of steel, an inch thick, but you're not going anywhere. You can't move. So you cannot go and impose your politics on someone else on the battlefield. All right? You're gonna, so you're going to be able to move. And the knights in uh, the Middle Ages were incredibly strong and fit. Just as archers were trained from being yay high, so knights were trained uh, in the higher forms, the more gentlemanly forms of combat, which is pantan fighting. All right? So they were incredibly strong. They were incredibly fit. And they could run in armour and fight all day in it. So, but to do that, you need. Where's the other player? Where's the big thick one? Oh, it's gone. Oh, no, it's that one. Okay, right. um, this, this is a two millimetre stick. That's the kind of thickness of play that would be on your body. Alright? Because you've got to protect the chest, and the same with that, you've got to protect the head. Brain damage is not good, that's going to kill you. Uh, any damage to the, uh, to the torso. Uh, it's probably going to kill you, so any damage to the diaphragm is probably going to kill you. All right? Um, that's true to know. Certainly without uh, medical help, you, you probably have. So you've got to protect these bits, but you've got to be able to move and fight so you can feel the difference in these bits. Neither thing one. You can feel the difference in weight between those two. All right? If you've got big things, so you're not, you're not going to be able to move. You can't fight on the weight disorder, then you've got people off. So, uh, we're going to test a piece of armour that, that's probably on someone's side. And we're going to imagine we're at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415, which is the 600th anniversary of this year. Uh, and what happened at Agincourt was Henry V took an army of around 6,000 Englishmen, consisting of about 5,000 archers and about 1,000 men at arms, uh, and invaded northern France and went on the rampage for months. Right? They just went. Round about, they just slaughtered people and stole all the chickens and absolute mayhem, right? The French are a bit cheesed off by all this activity. Henry V's got a claim on the French throne, so he's trying to impose his, his, his will, all right? Uh, and uh, uh, the French, they say no, that no, no, won't do it. So they put a couple of huge armies in the field, and one of them uh, corners the small English army at Agincourt, a little village called Agincourt. So this French army consists of about 25 to 30,000 men. France is an incredibly rich country at the time compared to England, and they're armed to the teeth. Okay? So the English army is cornered, uh, it's got a river to its back, it can't get out. The only way off the field is through the French army. Alright? And of course they're massively outnumbered. So the French send their envoys over and they say, come on. You've got to surrender. You haven't got a chance. You know, you're dead. You're bad. If we, if we do fight, we're just going to kill all of you. We know what to do. So, the head of the fifth realizes that he's in a bit of a sticky situation here. You know, a, bit of a, a bit of a sticky wiki he's on. Uh, so he says, right, well, if I surrender politically, I'm dead. If I survive, I'm politically unhappy. You know, there's going to be no one. So he does the unexpected thing. Um, the army's got all these stakes, these big spikes banged into the ground in front of them. And the French are camped out of bow shots, right away in the distance, about uh, 500 yards away. So what he does is he orders the army to lift up all their stakes and to advance to within bow shot of the French. All right? And he, the, the army suddenly all advances. This start was the French. They're not, they're like, what? What's going on? They're attacking. This is insane. So he advanced to within bow 
shot uh, and, and, and begin to the famous stage back in the ground and all the archers start to get their bows out, swing their bows and start shooting at the French uh, and get flight issues. So what we're going to do is, um, is, is simulate uh, uh, an English archer. So I need an English archer, I need a volunteer. <laughs> so, you're all stuck there in your own filth. But that's actually quite useful. Because if you're surrounded by your own filth, what you can do is take your arrows out and stick them in the ground and you're not. Right? And this is biological warfare. Because any injury will then be infected and they'll probably die anyway, even if it wasn't my injury. So, let's shoot, let's shoot the first arrow. stopped it going any further of course is the fact that we're all through into this back hole. Real human bodies don't have large pieces of uh, fireball inside and most of them would stay through. Right, so uh, that's if that's hit the thigh, that kind of depth of penetration is enough to have hit the ball, shattered the ball, yeah, or, or to have hit your femoral artery and you're going to lead to death. Alright? And certainly 
even if you've only just got to damage the muscle, you know, I imagine something penetrating that far into your leg is going to cause you a certain amount of discomfort. Uh, probably put you off by two minutes. You know, and you want to go for a lie down. Um, so, what does this tell Well, actually, this, this is all a bit of a con, isn't it? Because what we're doing, sorry, uh, what we're doing is, is, is that we've got the same kinetic energy. Yes, we've got the same kinetic energy. The momentum of this is about six times greater than an arrow. So the momentum is wrong. But if you want to study, you want to know how armor behaves and how arrows behave, what you need to do is fire an arrow on the bow. Ah, some armor. Alright, and, and actually fire the bow. So, this is okay. 